So we're just outside the Eric Little Community Centre here in Edinburgh here at the Holy Corner. Um, we have been inside the church across the street here. We were, we're going to be talking about the stained glass window. Um, but we have been invited in uh, to meet with John McMillan, who is the CEO of the Eric Little Community. And he'll tell us a little bit more about the life and legacy of Eric Little. Um, as we've been covering for this season, we've been talking about Scots who've been influential and also um, talking about the life and times of some of the most influential people here in Scotland. So this time we're going to focus on Eric Little. Let's go inside and we'll meet John. So, John, hello, Joe Harrow, we're here. Hi, Pleased yeah, to meet you again. Nice to meet you. Many thanks so, for coming. So, John, this is John McMillan, he's the CEO of the Eric Little Community. That's right. And he's going to tell us a little bit more about the life, the times, and the legacy of Eric. And you've got some nice stuff to show us, I believe, as well. Yep, absolutely. Well, delighted to, to welcome you in. And uh, I'm uh, fortunate to be the Chief Executive Officer of the Eric Little Community. First and foremost, we're a, a care charity a dementia specialist charity. We provide support to carers, run a befriending service, and we really support um, thousands of vulnerable people who live uh, in Edinburgh. That's, uh, that's what our main charity does, and we've been doing that for uh, just over 43 years. Um, but we're named after Eric Liddell. Uh -huh. And... Uh, um, this year, um, there's a, an amazing um, event happening, which is the centenary of uh, his um, amazing Olympic success, and uh, also doubly uh, lucky that um, the Paris Olympics uh, are, are, are the venue for this year, and it was in Paris that Eric uh, won his uh, Olympic medals. So um, we felt that as a charity named after Eric Liddell that if we didn't do something about his centenary, his legacy, who could or who should. Um, so we've developed an initiative called the Eric Liddell 100 um, uh, that is really there to celebrate um, his, uh, his, his achievements, um, who he was, what he stood for, uh, uh, and we're taking forward a whole range of developments to, to hopefully share that with uh, the wider community, the international community, and uh, younger, younger generations as well. And for those of people who are tuning in just at the beginning, they may not know who Eric Little is, mm -hmm. but if I was to mention Chariots of Fire... Yeah. Yes, so probably the film Chariots of Fire, Oscar-winning film, um, uh, probably immortalised uh, Eric Liddell. But I would say um, if you were below the age of 45, the chances are that uh, that great film is probably meaningless to at least two generations. Mm -hmm. um, and that is one of the exciting opportunities that we've got uh, is to um, bring his story to a younger and wider wider generation. Um, so he was a, a, a well known as a, an, an excellent uh, rugby player. He played uh, for Scotland seven times, um, but probably more known as an amazing athlete. Mm -hmm. And he's, one of his many nicknames was uh, the Flying Scotsman. Um, so uh, he was a committed Christian. Um, uh, the son of uh, his parents were missionaries uh, uh -huh. in China. He was born in China, spent most of his life in China, um, passed away in China. And he, um, when he was still competing, he made a decision that he wasn't going to run in the 100 meter heats, which was he was the favourite to win uh, yeah. at the Paris Olympics because the heats were on a Sunday. So he took a principled decision, refused to run on that, it caused chaos at the time, I yes, understand. I um, uh, and then he um, he switched to the 400 meters. Uh, won the gold there and was also managed to compete in the 200 metres, which he was going to do anyway, and he, he won a bronze. He bronze. So. Mm -hmm. And I do understand that uh, in the he had to drop out of the 4x100 four by four by relay, for this, or the 4x400 four relay, for the similar reason it was on a mm -hmm. Sunday, and then the Americans won the gold. But later on, he ran for the British Empire against the US, and the British beat the Americans. 
That's right, and I, th and I think his competitors, um, when uh, that victory was achieved in the States, they, they said to him, well, well done, and we know that uh, you're, uh, the, you're the top the top sprinter. Um, and, and they said, not Eric, that, uh, that his victory there um, confirmed that. So mm -hmm. I think they were very um, sort of um, welcoming and sort of uh, positive about it all. That's great. So let's take it a wee bit further back. You said he was actually born in China. His mm. parents were missionaries in China at the time? Yes, that's right. Uh, he was born in Changjin uh, uh, in, in China and um, uh, missionaries at that time would, would spend years um, uh, overseas uh, uh, in the country that they were placed. Um, and um, he's, they, they, did, they did have a, a, a presence in Edinburgh um, and they did stay here uh, but Eric and his elder brother um, they attended boarding school um, so for primary right through to secondary uh, uh, education they attended Eltham College which um, is just outside side London at that point Eltham College was the school for the children of missionaries okay. um, which is no longer the case now, but mm -hmm. uh, Eltham College is still very much um, uh, alive and doing a great job, and uh, they, they're also particularly proud of their links and history with, with, with Eric Liddell and the Liddell family. And then after his schooling, um, he came up to Edinburgh and he studied at Edinburgh University. Yes, and they did have, uh, the, the Liddell family did have uh, uh, Furlow's home um, where they would have a break for an extended period of time. So the family did live in Edinburgh. Um, <coughs> but yes, you're right, when he did finish uh, school, um, he attended uh, the University of Edinburgh. He studied uh, pure science. Um, and uh, graduated there. He, he, he graduated after he'd won the, the Paris Olympics and uh, there's some iconic pictures of him um, being carried out of uh, McCoon Hall after his graduation, um, which was just really a, a week or so after, uh -huh. after his Olympic success. Um, uh, and during his uh, time uh, in Edinburgh University, he, he, uh, he, he became well known as a, a, an excellent rugby player. Um, played for Edinburgh University, played for the Edinburgh Wanderers Club as well, which mm -hmm. was strongly linked to Edinburgh Uni, and then was um, um, selected to play for Scotland, and uh, he was known as a flying winger, um, so he'd use his speed, uh, but he was also, um, uh, uh, reading some of the reports about him, he was uh, a bit of a tenacious tackler, um, and uh, would would not would not hold back regardless of the size of the op opposition. He wasn't the tallest man in the world, uh, but he's seemingly uh, technical term. He got stuck in. <laughs> Very Scottish term. He got stuck in. But I guess his speed helped him as well. well you got to have speed as well as you got to be lithe and 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 fit and have the speed when you're playing rugby. Well, absolutely. And I think he, he was passionate about rugby, um, but he realised with the Olympics coming up. It, it was probably going to be too much to continue um, to um, to do both. Mm -hmm. So I think he very reluctantly um, um, paused and stopped his, his rugby career. And certainly the feedback from um, uh, many rugby historians and experts, uh, the view was that he had a, a very long and successful career in rugby had he chosen to, to continue with it. Yeah. And we were certainly delighted that um, uh, Scottish rugby um, have, have uh, kind of agreed to, to be one of our key partners with the Eric Liddle 100. And uh, they've been a really proactive uh, partner for ours. And they, a couple of years ago, inducted Eric Liddle into um, the, the Scottish Rugby Hall of Fame. Um, uh, and they did that... Um, uh, in 2022 um, okay. to commemorate his first cap with them 100 years earlier then. And you've got some stuff you're going to show us. There. So we'll be jumping back and forward, but while we're on the subject of getting a cap, can mm. you just explain to people who, who are not from the UK and might not understand what it means getting a cap for your country? 
Sure. Um, uh, well, so for for all Scottish sports, if um, if you're selected to represent your country, um, uh, you, you certain sports offer uh, an international cap, and it is physically um, uh, a cap that you can see see there, um, and. Uh, um, so if you play as Eric did for s seven times for Scotland, um, uh, he would have um, nominally seven caps. Uh, they don't give actually physically give a cap out every time you play mm -hmm. for Scotland. Um, but um, and his ca uh, international cap for for Scottish rugby, along with so much of his. Um, personal belongings, um, because of how he lived his life and how he lost his life um, as, a, as a missionary in China. Um, he was ultimately interned uh, in a, a Japanese internment camp during the Second World War. So um, most of his belongings um, have, have been lost. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, but certainly um, when we formed our partnership with Scottish Rugby about the Eric of the 100, uh, they were really interested to find out more about Eric, his family, um, and did he have his international cap. And when they found out that it had been lost, they were um, uh, really proactive and very keen to reissue his mm -hmm. lost international cap, which is quite a rare um, and probably an honour in itself. Uh, so the, uh, <clears throat> the then chairman of Scottish Rugby presented Eric Ladogue's eldest daughter, Patricia, with her father's uh, international cap at one of our events a few years ago. Um, and uh, ha well, happy can confirm that there wasn't a dry eye, dry eye in the house, yeah. um, including Patricia's eyes. She was absolutely um, delighted that she had something of her father's, um, yeah. uh, if you know what I mean. And the daughter, the daughter's still alive. She lives in Canada. Yeah, the, uh, Eric uh, and his wife had, th had three daughters, um, um, and um, uh, his, his second daughter unfortunately passed away uh, last year, but uh, Eric's eldest uh, daughter, uh, Patricia, uh, and the younger daughter are, are still very much uh, uh, alive and well, uh, living in, in, in Canada. Um, we have developed a really strong link with the Liddell family and, and uh, Patricia in particular, um, and she has visited um, and uh, has actually said to us that if her father was with us today, he would be um, fully supportive of what we are trying to do as uh, via the Eric Liddell community and our care uh, and support of vulnerable people, but also would be, I think, um, pleased to see uh, some of the legacy work they're developing via the Eric Liddell 100. Excellent. So let's take it a wee bit further back here. So we've talked about he, he uh, was born in China, came over here, he went to uh, a, mission, a school that was set up for the sons, and do sons of missionaries in China. He then came up to Edinburgh University, he studied uh, natural sciences, and he graduated there. So natural sciences back in the, the 1920s would have been all this, it'd been maths, physics, biology, chemistry, it'd all, all have been mm -hmm. under one title, speaking mm -hmm. as a graduate of Edinburgh University, from the Faculty of Sciences myself. Um, so then it would have been general, and he then went, he taught, he preached here, but then he went and he graduated from, uh, as, a, as a preacher here in Edinburgh from a local uh, college in the, in the Morningside area, I believe, mm -hmm. and then he went back to China. Well, he actually he initially went over to China as a teacher, yeah. um, and and uh, worked worked initially there in um, uh, in Changjin uh, in that role. And yes, um, pure science was 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 his his subject. Um, he then um, he, he did come back uh, for a period of time on on furlough, as they described yeah. it. And during that time, that's when he. Um, uh, did further work and study to become um, a, a minister. And then when he returned uh, to, to China, he um, was active as, uh, as a missionary.
seminary there. When he was a teacher, it was within a Christian um, school for, for Chinese children. So yeah. he was very much immersed and surrounded by um, learning and, 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 and the teachings of Christianity. But certainly that, he wasn't a, a, an active minister, qualified minister. Um, uh, when he first went over, it was, it was his teaching role that, that took him over oh, okay. um, initially. Yeah. His brother was also um, uh, in China with him. Uh, he was uh, qualified in, in, uh, as, a, as a medic, so he, he was also in China, um, uh, not as a missionary, but um, working closely um, uh, with Eric, and their paths did cross from time to time. Oh, okay. And... This is in the night, from the 1920s to 1930s, and then we have the Japanese invasion of China, and then the foreign citizens, so the British citizens and many more, were then taken into internment camps. These internment camps that were taken into would have all different gender. They probably separated in terms of gender and sex, but they had of different ages in these camps, I believe. So he continued his education in the camps, I believe. Yeah, that's that's right. I mean, the um, in China in the 1930s was quite a, a place of conflict. Um, uh, there was a whole range of uh, civil disruption uh, and, and internal factions um, fighting um, uh, uh, for control and, and power. Um, and um, <clears throat> certainly, that was almost. Um, uh, prior to and before the, the Second World War conflict. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, um, so Eric was held in the internment camp um, during the Second World War, so from um, the 19, early 1940s. Um, and um, you're right, uh, there was a, a range of, the camp that he was in was mainly of non-Chinese citizens. So, um, so they scooped up a whole range of business people, um, <coughs> People such as Eric, who were over there um, as missionaries, are working to support uh, that that message. Yep. Um, so there was um, young people, children, families, uh, individuals, people from business, in international um, people from different countries throughout the world. Yep. Um, uh, uh, so there was quite a large group of them um, in in the the internment camp at, at Weifang. Yeah. And he did die in the internment camp eventually. Uh, yes, he died uh, a, a young a young man uh, aged uh, forty three um, in nineteen forty five, and unfortunately, just a few months before um, all, all the people in the camp were 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 released, um, and um, he passed away um, due to a brain tumor mm. that um, uh, nobody in the camp nor he knew that was the issue, but he had written to his wife um, indicating that he, he, he'd been unwell, uh, he wasn't sure what the situation was, but uh, yes, yeah, so, so he passed away just a, f a few months before the end of the Second World War when he would have been released. Mm. And having read some of the stuff from people who were in the camp with them, um, you get the, you, you can see the legacy almost starting almost immediately from 1945 because people who were in, in the internment camp with them speak so highly of them mm -hmm. and how things fell apart in the camp. Even though it was a few months before liberation, things kind of fell apart when he died because he tended to hold everything together. He was like oil over troubled water and he kept mm -hmm. this calm demeanor in this dreadful place they were they were held in yeah you're, you're right and i think the the i've had the the the, the pleasure of of speaking to somebody who who spent time uh, in the camp with them and uh, she when she contacted me she was quite an elderly woman who i think had been um, eight or um, uh, ten when she'd been in the camp and she spoke so highly of uh, how, um, just what you said really, how Eric put the needs of others before his own, mm -hmm. but he really focused on um, the children who were, who were in the camp. He was known as Uncle Eric um, um, and he would organise um, uh, activities, 
sports. He encouraged um, young people to get involved and be active. He, uh, his earlier decisions not to run on a Sunday were not active when he was in the camp. Yeah. He encouraged um, young people to, to participate in games and he actually organised and refereed and supported those games regardless of what day, day of the week it was because he realised in those circumstances that the, the interests and needs of children and young people were, were the, the, of pa paramount really. Yeah. Um, <coughs> he also, um, the, the woman that I mentioned that I spoke to, uh, she said that he pulled together from whatever was in the camp, not very much, yeah. uh, and, and wrote for her and other children a whole range of um, textbooks and and study books. So we're now um, uh, delighted to have with us uh, a chemistry workbook that uh, Eric Riddle wrote, wrote. So it's in his handwriting yeah. um, for for this. Um, as she was then a, a young child, yeah. and she she held on to that for all, all of her life, um, and was really honoured to, to 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 have that. So I think that gives a, an insight into. Um, Yes, his um, his faith beliefs, but how he actually um, utilised them uh, to support others yeah. um, and to support others, whether they were uh, Christian um, or, or, or not. not. Yeah. Um, uh, and certainly how our charity, we, um, uh, we, we are not a religious-based charity, but we certainly understand the... The, um, how central Christianity was to Eric's life and we respect that and what we are endeavouring to do in our legacy project is work with the interfaith community and our ecumenical colleagues to encourage them to tell uh, Eric's faith message and story in a way that they define as appropriate. We have, with their support, for example, we've, uh, we're looking to, to host a major service of remembrance and celebration uh, of Eric in St Giles Cathedral um, this summer. So yeah. I think that will be quite an insightful event. So the programme of Eric Little 100 yes. is not just one event, it's no. a whole series through the whole of 2024. Absolutely. Um, the Era Little 100 simply aims to secure, develop and celebrate the legacy of Eric Little. Okay. And um, our view, Joe, is that um, our work in, in, in supporting the development of that legacy and securing that legacy will not finish on the 31st of December 2024. Yes. It will continue um, uh, next year, the year after that, uh, and, 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 and an ongoing basis. We're, we're pre developing a whole range of uh, events, particularly in the, uh, the centenary year, um, but we do feel that the centenary year in itself is a milestone that is worthy of special recognition, yes. uh, but it's also acting as a fantastic launch pad for our work, which touches on three main areas, Joe. Before we go into that, because I really want to go into the sure. legacy of it, I want to, you've, you've got some real st uh, good mm -hmm. memorabilia here, and I want you to take us a wee walk through on this, because there's some real priceless stuff here, and if you could talk a wee bit about that, and then we'll go on to talk about the, the, the three different streams that you're following here for the Early Little 100 and beyond. Is that okay? Sure. Hello, uh, Mike here, taking over the mic for a little bit here at the Eric Little Centre, and uh, we've got John here, uh, CEO um, of uh, the, the centre and uh, major driving force of the Eric Little 100 initiative, uh, which we've just been talking about. And now uh, we're going to swap around and uh, have a wee look at uh, some of the items here uh, significant to the Eric Little 100 as well as to Eric Little's life as well. So maybe get to John to speak a little bit. Uh, first of all, maybe about the tartan because uh, this is amazing, this uh, special tartan and I believe he's getting a kilt made up in this tartan um, specifically for the Eric Little 100. So if you'd like to maybe say something about the selection of uh, colours in the, the tartan here, John, that would be great. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, first of all, I'd, I'd mention that we were delighted to be introduced to the kilt makers Kinloch Anderson, uh, based down in Leith, 
um, uh, who for generations on generations have been developing tartans uh, for many clans and purposes uh, from Scotland, but their work uh, goes out throughout the world. Uh, so we were lucky enough to be introduced to um, uh, John Kinloch uh, of Kinloch Anderson. Um, um, and um, they very kindly agreed to develop um, uh, an Eric Liddell Tartan. And uh, you'll see uh, we've got some um, uh, initial um, uh, cuttings of that um, and you're right I, I'm, I was really excited because at the weekend I was getting uh, my own Eric Liddell tartan uh, measured up so hopefully I haven't a couple of weeks but we worked very closely uh, as we do with everything uh, in terms of our work here be it our care work or our legacy work we work closely with the Liddell family so we spoke to um, uh, Eric's eldest daughter Patricia and uh, Eric's niece uh, uh, Sue Liddlecaton, who's also one of our patrons, um, and uh, we talked with them and with uh, uh, Kenlock Anderson. Uh, we talked about the the, the colours and the meaning of colours, and um, this tartan is based. Uh, on elements of the Dael uh, tartan, which has a connection with uh, the the little the little name, and um, the colours also have a meaning, uh, and the the yellow um, uh, uh, represents gold. Um, uh, so his gold medal, um, blue uh, is for Scotland. Navy blue is for Scottish rugby, who he was honoured to represent on the rugby field. And also Edinburgh University have a, a blue in their tartan. Red, uh, no great surprises for China, and he's, uh, uh, his, his, the majority of his lifetime being spent there. And green um, is really intended to represent his family holidays in Karkant, and, uh, 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 and also his love of the sports field. And there's a very slight tinge of grey in the tartan that also represents uh, the pain of separation, internment and, and loss in, in his life. So um, we're, we're, we're working up uh, to launching this tartan uh, in the next uh, couple of months as part of the Eric Liddell 100, as part of his centenary year. And we're certainly hoping that um, there'll be quite a bit of interest. Um, um, they already will re receive quite a bit of interest from North America, from China, uh, from other parts of Europe and in Scotland as well. So um, we wouldn't be surprised if uh, this is uh, the next thing on the, on, the, on, the, on the fashion world, let's hope. Um, not that I'll be uh, equipped to, to model it, but uh, let's, we're hoping that, uh, on, a, on a serious note, that it will, it will really take off um, and also be another way to uh, remember Eric Liddell and uh, that in itself is a bit of, a bit of our legacy work that, that, will, that will add something special to what we're doing. Yeah, that's interesting. Of course, uh, Tartan, uh, many people think it's confined to family, clans and so on, but uh, it's much broader than that. Of course, uh, for corporate use, many businesses, football teams as well, uh, I could mention so many, uh, and it's so nice to see our traditional uh, Tartan cloth uh, coming into uh, modern dress and commemorating such great uh, people as Eric Little also. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the things that we're we're hoping um, we're we've been so lucky that um, uh, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal, uh, she very kindly agreed to become the patron of the Eric Liddell 100, and and as you know, she's uh, um, very much a, a Scottish fan. She's the patron of Scottish rugby. She's the Chancellor of Edinburgh University. Um, uh, she wears a tartan uh, generally quite regularly, so we're looking forward to being able to present her with uh, uh, an item of Eric Liddell tartan and, and hope, our fingers are crossed, that she might, she might wear that from time to time. So um, uh, 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 we're, we're quite excited about getting the, the launch of the tartan done and, and encouraging uh, local and international friends and colleagues to, uh, to put it on. And also this uh, stunning vase here, uh, would you maybe like to say a little bit about that? It's amazing. Yeah. 
Well, um, th this is, um, there's, there was a few of these. Um, so every, every gold medal winner from the 1924 Olympics were presented with one or similar to this. And we're delighted that the Liddell family have uh, enabled us to hold this um, in trust for them. So this is um, one of very few um, um, Franco Chinese inspired um, vases that were that this one was given to Eric, um, and f and that is probably fortunately one of the very few items that Eric um, held personally um, uh, that is, is still is still with us. Um, so we're delighted and honoured to be able to um, hold that. Um, and uh, what we're aiming to do is include that and on, with alongside some of the other items that we'll probably chat about, that will be an integral part of our Eric Liddell exhibition um, that we're hoping will launch um, this, this summer. Fantastic. And uh, of course, this uh, fabulous bust as well. Um, I, th I, I love this because I love the expression as well. And having looked at the portrait of Eric Liddell and photographs as well, I think the artist has really ca captured the essence of the person uh, here also. So would you maybe like to say make a few comments on this as well? Yeah. Certainly, um, the, um, we're a care charity. Um, we probably don't know an awful lot about uh, how to create um, uh, statues of MD um, and, and, and certainly of uh, Eric Liddell. So we, we, we've worked closely with a range of cultural experts and we were delighted to be introduced to an amazing uh, sculptor uh, who is probably um, not and internationally known as yet, but I think one for the future. Her name is Amelia Vero, and uh, we spoke to Amelia, uh, uh, who um, was really interested to get involved in uh, a, a, a project uh, linked to Eric Liddell. So she very kindly um, produced this, um, and also a small, um, um, maybe a uh, 12 inches tall, a small image of what a full statue um, would, 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 the pose that Eric would hold. And, and, but she did a, a larger insight, um, this bust of Eric, so that she could work on and get the, uh, the lightness um, um, as close as she could. Now, again, like we did with the tartan development, we uh, consulted with the Liddell family. Um, we showed them photos of earlier versions of this when it was still in clay. Um, and they made suggestions to... Um, there was one, I think there's a photo of Eric where he's got a bit of a quiff. I think he's been, he's been running and his hair is maybe um, uh, a bit more upright than normal. So uh, they were saying, oh, well, that, that's not really a great representative. Of, so so they, were, they had an input and they changed and improved the draft with and for the, the sculptor, which um, and, and when you think of the, 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 the amount of years that, that that spreads, it gives a direct link to Eric uh, Liddell himself. So where we're at, we've got this just now and we are hoping to hear from sponsors, philanthropists, uh, people, businesses who might want to get behind us and um, sponsor or donate um, so that we can turn this amazing initial work into uh, a larger permanent um, uh, structure or statue of some sort, whether it's a, a full size or, or whatever else. So we've got that in the bag, if you like. Um, we just need uh, the external support or sponsors to come forward uh, to take this forward to the next level. And it's interesting because when I spoke to Amelia, um, it was just at the time uh, that um, the successful and famous um, uh, Scottish former world champion uh, Ken Buchanan, his, his statue was just launched um, at, at that time uh, in Edinburgh. So we, we would hope to do something similar, but uh, as I now know, um, taking the idea of a statue from uh, beginning to um, completion is quite a lengthy and indeed expensive uh, task. Uh, so just now, 
we're relying on we're relying on, on others to come forward for that. But we're delighted with, with what we've got and with Amelia's guidance and support. This will also be included in the Eriodo exhibition. Yeah, and uh, also there's a little uh, sculpture here. I think of his uh, cap, his uh, rugby cap here um, to commemorate um, his inclusion in the Hall of Fame, Scottish Rugby Hall of Fame. Uh, yes, and uh, again, our, uh, our, our friends and colleagues at Scottish Rugby, they, they remember and celebrate their own um, and those who have worked with them now and in the past, and in Eric's case, the, the, the fairly distant past. So <clears throat> in uh, 2022, in January of 2022, they um, very kindly inducted Eric into their uh, Hall of Fame at, at Scottish Rugby. And this is really a memento of um, the, uh, the international cap that was presented to her patron, Eric, um, Eric's niece, Sue Little Caton. So she was delighted to uh, take that honour. Um, <clears throat> and again, she's um, uh, left it with uh, the charity named after her uncle in trust uh, 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 to care for. And we will, again, um, that will be on display as part of our Eric Little exhibition. The one thing that isn't here that I'd be very keen to mention is, and I don't know if you're... If uh, the people who 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 follow you, I'm fairly certain there'll be quite a few uh, sports and athletics fans, and the <clears throat> the World Indoor Athletics Championships was in Scotland, Glasgow a couple of weeks ago, and. Um, the president of World Athletics, um, Lord Seb Coe, um, a, a former athlete, athlete um, himself, an Olympic champion, he presented Eric's niece uh, with uh, a World Athletics uh, Award, a Legends Award, uh, for her uncle Eric Liddell. So um, we, we we're rece receiving international recognition of Eric, uh, as as it should be, and we're delighted to. Um, to have seen Scottish Rugby's recognition of, of one other former former players. And as, uh, I see you've got a, a, a trophy here, uh, or, um, a commemoration of being inducted into the Scottish Sports Hall of Fame and the wider uh, world, if you like, um, too. So on St, we've got St Andrew's Day as well in 2002. Yeah. Yes, my, my understanding is that... Um, uh, that Eric was one of the first inductees into the Scottish Sports Hall of Fame um, in 2002. Um, so um, uh, and uh, uh, so he's listed there as well. Um, so again, all of all of this and more, um, we're hoping to immortalise really um, uh, in our exhibition about Eric Liddle, uh, and also uh, uh, th these will be um, uh, included on our website digitally, so that people will be able to see um, all of these and and more special items, uh, some of which. Um, Eric um, held and owned, and that would include his Olymp three Olympic medals that are generally on on show, but certainly in, in the care of Edinburgh University on behalf of the family again. So his gold medal, his bronze medal, and a participation medal, uh, they will also be in the exhibition um, uh, um, uh, this summer. So um, we're hoping that that, that will give a fitting tribute to uh, one of Scotland's, one of Britain's, and some would say one of China's uh, iconic iconic figures. Yeah, great. And finally, on the table here, I see this little medal. I think you've spoken about uh, outreach uh, during their uh, little 100 to schools and the wider community as well. So this looks like a little uh, kind of um, winning medal. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, what, what um, and my, my colleague Caroline will, will tell you a wee bit more about this, but the Edit Little 100 has three main work streams that I mentioned earlier, education, sports and physical activity and culture. And uh, um, the, the, this medal really, uh, you, many, many school, school kids and young people will see this and hopefully receive them uh, uh, in schools because um, um, our educational resources, um, which we launched 
launched last month. Um, we're encouraging all schools, initially all schools in Scotland, primaries, um, top end of primary school, P7 transition and first, second and third year to engage um, and utilise the resources that we've developed for hard-pressed and very busy teachers. They don't need to worry about doing the research that we've done with our partners um, and there will be a whole range of uh, um, teaching plans for, uh, for our teaching colleagues that they will be able to embed within the Scottish Curriculum for Excellence. And our thinking is that if we can do that, um, and then these medals will probably be awarded to people um, uh, at the school, school sports events and school, uh, school sports days. And we're encouraging every school in Scotland, every school in the UK, and hopefully many schools throughout the world, not to have their individual school sports day as usual, but maybe have their Eric Liddell Sports Day during the centenary year. And that and the teaching in the classroom will help to bring Eric to a younger generation and people who um, probably weren't on the planet when the, uh, the Oscar winning film uh, Chariots of Fire was, was launched. Um, so it will hopefully help to bridge a generational, generational gap between maybe people of our age group um, and uh, some of our uh, younger people in society.